Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Pro Basketball, presented by the Air National Guard. Season three of women's basketball here at Fairbank Coliseum in Dallas, Texas. We have 25 returning athletes, 15 newcomers. Should be an exciting season with playoff intensity for all four weeks. Four weeks, four teams, 40 world-class athletes here inside the Coliseum in Dallas, Texas. Our first game tonight, Team Lexi Hull opposes Team Alicia Gray. Blue on orange. We are excited to tip things off. With the Hall of Famer, Cheryl Swoops, Brendan Glasheen, Savannah Collins, and Ari Chambers will join us tonight as well. And Cheryl, really exciting first game tonight for Athletes Unlimited. Two teams that want to let their defense turn into offense. Absolutely. Let's go. They're excited. They're ready. I'm excited. I'm ready. We may have two first-time captains, but they're definitely not new to this game. Lexi Hall is the reigning AU Defensive Player of the Year. 29 steals, 12 block shots. Really excited to see the next step she takes this year. Yeah, Lexi Hall, reigning defensive player of the year last year. But not only does she defend, Lexi Hall does so many things for her team. She scores, she rebounds, she blocks shots, she can knock down threes. One of the few players that plays both ends of the floor, Lexi Hall is going to be great tonight. And Alicia Gray, another player that can just flat out score the basketball, put it on the floor, attack the paint. Oh yeah, she can block shots too. I love how she attacks the basket. Nice pull up jumper. Alicia Gray is gonna come out ready to go tonight. Team Hole, Team Gray to kick off season three of AU Women's Hoops. We'll start when we come back. Let's present tonight's starting lineups for Team Hull. First time captain Ruthie Hebert was her first draft pick on Monday. Hebert, the first year AU forward. Training camp contract with the Minnesota Lynx for this coming season. Haley Jones, her first season in AU of the Atlanta Dream. Grace Berger, a late addition to the roster. And Teresa Plaisance, a nine-year WNBA veteran. And there are W veterans, Cheryl littered on Team Gray. Natasha Cloud, Tiffany Mitchell, two established point guards as pros in the W. Emily Engsler and Adut Bogok. Yeah, listen, if you haven't watched Athletes Unlimited, you are in for a treat tonight. To your point, lots of WNBA players, current and former, this is going to be a great season. Team Gray, Team Hall, two first-time captains. Jeff Wooten is our crew chief tonight. Eric Alig is our other official. And also joining the game one officiating team, Dara Robinson Ash. Year three of Athletes Unlimited, a little bit different as far as format. Last year and the inaugural season were a five week setup. This year, a four week setup with 40 athletes as opposed to. 44 in years past. Grace Berger at the controls, defended by Gray. Underway, 10 minute quarters in Athletes Unlimited Women's Basketball. Shot clock dwindles 10 seconds, plays on, too strong on the jumper, tip towards us. Second chance opportunity. Well, you know, we, we're, we're losing a week, which is unfortunate because it's gonna be some great basketball. And Haley Jones is coming in as a newcomer saying, oh yeah. I'm here. Haley Jones, arrested Haley Jones. Very excited about playing in her first season, a chance after college last year to take a break. Alicia Gray connects from the top of the arc. The team captain gets the orange squad on the board. Yeah, leash, gold medal leash. Last year, racked up 420 MVP points. Three MVPs, level one, two, and three, elected at the end of each game. Open shooter, Lexi Hall, team captain. The three-point shot important to highlight because that's the most points you can collect on a single play, 30 points. Adu on the fake, or pardon me, Bulgok on the up fake, turned over. You talked about the leaderboard. Alicia Gray finished fourth on the leaderboard last year with over 5,700 points, and Lexi Hall finished eighth on the leaderboard last year. 
Emily Engsler commits the foul. 90 seconds in, 2-2 game. Here's the overview for Athletes Unlimited Pro Basketball. Anything here, Cheryl, that you think is important for folks to uh, hone in on here as we've got Jones at the line? Well, I, I just I just think for those who haven't watched Athletes Unlimited, it's very different, very exciting, very fast paced. It's not your typical 2 4 2, 3 4 3. To your point, a three pointer is 30 points, a two pointer is 20 points, but you can also have points taken away, turnovers, mm -hmm. minus 10. This is going to be very exciting for those who've never tuned in. You got to make sure you, you keep your eye on, on turnovers, on buckets, assists, everything. Plays on soft the mark from three point range. Last year made 35 threes, second most in Athletes Unlimited. Second year veteran. Team Hall with seven players on the squad with WNBA experience. Team Gray, five players, notably at the guard positions. You know, the first thing I notice when I look at Team Hall is their, their length. They're at every position, they're long athletic and I think what Lexi wanted to do in her draft was draft players who could defend and turn their defense into offense. A Duke Bulgok with the range first year center from Edmonton Alberta overseas player for eight years stops in France Israel Mexico for a Bulgok and Team Gray leads 5-4. Another wrinkle from previous years, those that are new to AU, they also credit you win points, including winning quarters. And we're not quite there yet with seven minutes to go, but uh, compared to previous years, you can win 60 points if your team wins the quarter, whereas in last year's format and the year before, 50 points. So that's gone up a bit. Yeah, and, and that could be a big difference, going from 50 points to 60 for a quarter win, Going from 150 points to 180 points for a game win, that that could make a big difference. The other thing I really love about, about Athletes Unlimited is every everything you do matters, right? It's either going to be positive points or it's going to be negative points. Here's the breakdown. Also, 180 points if your team wins the game. Last year, that number was at 150. Tough take in the paint. Alicia Gray hunting for her own shot. Ooh, that was kind of stanky, Leash. It's a 7-0 run for Team Gray. And Leash with four points of her team's nine. Turnover by Team Hall. We're going back to Gray squad. Yeah, well, we talked about Alicia Gray in the open, how she's just able to score in so many ways here. Nice spin move for easy two. And then she had a little stink face. She liked it too. <laughs> 29 year old is entering her eighth season with the Atlanta Dream coming up. Her second season with the Dream established in the W to start off with the Dallas Wings. Cloud off the back foot, swish. Natasha Cloud gets involved in the act. Oh, okay, Tosh. They've got weapons okay, everywhere. Tosh. Cloud feisty on the defensive end. Clouding Jones, dribble drive, and Grace Berger earns a trip to the free throw line. This is just nasty by Natasha Cloud. How do you guard this? Listen, Team Gray, they've come out attacking offensively. Tosh Cloud attacking Lexi Hall, who's a pretty good defender, but the offense was just better. Emily Exler picks up her second foul. Four plus minutes in. Team Gray leads 11 to four. Grace Berger at the line. A late addition to the AU roster was added Monday to replace Avina Westbrook. Stand out with the Indiana Hoosiers, won 118 games, the most in the program's history in her tenure from 2018 to 2023. Well, it's no surprise that uh, Lexi Hall was like, I think I'm going to take <laughs> Grace Burger on my team. Yeah. Teammates with the Indiana Fever. Sure. And Karima Christmas Kelly, the first year facilitator serving in really whatever role the captains want them to serve. They can be a head coach. They can be an extra player to work out practice plans. She's also on the Indiana staff. <laughs> They've got the fever feeling down here in Dallas. 
Open jumper, Essence Carson coming off the bench. 18th pick of Team Hull. 13 years in the W out of Rutgers. Ali yes. Gray with the up fake and knocks down the J. Woof. Listen, somebody better guard her. Alicia said, I am going for that championship this, this year. I'm not going to finish fourth. I'm going to finish at the top. Just a complete player shot. 47% from the field last summer. Average 19 a game in Athletes Unlimited last year. Season three for AU Women's Hoops. Engsler is fouled and will go to the line, Cheryl, when we come back. Team Gray is in control. And Team Gray is in control because Alicia Gray is just getting it done from everywhere on the floor. Oh, no. It's good. Scenes of media day that took place at the beginning of last week. Excellent atmosphere here at Fairbank, Fair Park Coliseum here in Dallas, Texas. Just before we hit the break, Emily Engsler earned a trip to the free throw line. Team Gray on a 13 to one run. Engsler is super excited about joining AU. Made the choice that overseas was not the proper decision for her coming off an injury. Eight months since she's played competitive basketball, and this is a perfect opportunity for her as a, a jump start to the summer and what's to come. Absolutely, and you know, there are so many players who just choose not to go overseas, and the fact that they have an opportunity to stay at home after the W season and play in AU against some very good talent is really good for players like Emily Ainsworth. Essence Carson disrupted by Engsler, getting it done on both ends. Despite the two personal fouls, Emily Engsler has stayed out there and stayed in her position defensively. If you're just joining us, Ali Chagre, six points on three of four shooting in the early going, three boards, three assists, filling up that stash. Yeah, she, she's just getting it done. Someone on Team Hull is gonna have to find a way to slow her down. Open driving lane, Gray off the back iron. And corralled by Team Hull. Golden Purple, led by Kelsey Mitchell, Team Purple. And Odyssey Sims, the captain of the Gold Squad, is our second game of this doubleheader on opening night. Lauren Mincy gives it up, shot clock to five seconds. Alexi Hull motors along the baseline, could not get the reverse to go. It's a great take by Lexi. Team Hull, Cheryl, just one of nine from the field, while Team Gray is six of 10 shooting. You know, one thing I, I think Team Hall wants to be able to do with their length is use that on the defensive end so they can hopefully get out in passing lanes, hit steals, push in transition, and score some easy buckets. Because right now their half-court sets that they're running does not seem to be working. And Team Gray's only turned the ball over two times. Lexi Hull's squad with four giveaways. And we'll talk to Savannah Collins uh, later tonight, but she did a great job in the draft coverage on Monday, the first draft of season three. And really the theme of Team Hall is that the hybrid players, the, the length, they can create mismatches. And that's what they hope to do, as you said, in the half court. And maybe get out and run if they can contain the guards of Team Gray. You know, it's interesting when you look at, at the draft and you look at how the captains drafted their teams and the players that they chose. When you look at, at Team Gray, Alicia Gray, she, she went for more guards that can just get out, can push the ball in transition. And as you see, Tiffany Mitchell, Tasha Cloud, any of them can push the ball and bring it up in transition. And how about the hustle by Tiffany Mitchell on the offensive glass? After a miss three, a turnover that electrifies transition for Team Gray. More free throws for the team in orange. <laughs> Tiffany Mitchell, the first pick by Alicia Gray. I think the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks <laughs> have something to do with that, possibly. <laughs> you think? She's probably like, girl, you better pick me. Gray and Mitchell, two of four South Carolina representatives in season three of Athletes Unlimited Women's Hoops. 16 to five, the run continues 
for Team Gray. 14-1 over the last five minutes. Entry to Hull, knocks it back out to Jackson. Gray in a low, strong defensive stance. Carson's bottled up. Fall away, Jay. Carson knocks it down. That's nice old school. That's old school, Brendan. He said, young buck to Emily Inksler. Don't go for the shot, Faye. Young buck on loose. <laughs> that maybe allows Team Hull to settle in. Down just nine as we come up on two minutes to go in the first. Mitchell the kick out, and there's a turnover, and there's the length on the defensive end. Carson doing it for a long time. Three-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Get it done on offense, too. Listen, I, I think Carson is getting younger with time. Nice little shot fake. Got Inksler in the air, step back. It's good. I see you, old school. Does that apply to you as well, getting younger with time? Of course. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you wanted to, how far you wanted to go into that. I, I don't know. It depends on who you ask. If you ask me, I'm going to say, of course. Okay. <laughs> nice oh, that's nice. Off the ball and an easy deuce for Team Hall. Now they're starting to find their groove in the half court. Yeah, and that particular play, Grace Berger did a really nice job of moving without the basketball, finding Mimi Jackson cutting for easy two. Again, if you win the quarter, your team, each player's awarded 60 points. Factors into the leaderboard, which they award four players medals at the end of the season, a defensive player of the year and a teammate of the year. Got a long way to go until that final leaderboard, but all the points you can get are super important. Carson barrels into the lane and drew a foul. This is the electric ball movement, Cheryl, off the ball, and that set up the easy two. Oh, well, Team Hall, they've just done a really nice job. That's the way they found themselves back in this game, is moving without the basketball. Pass, cut, draw two, another cutter, kick. Key moment there, Emily Exler awarded a block shot, and then they led to a jump ball, so they tip it. Team Gray has possession. It's Natasha Cloud, new member of the Phoenix Mercury, one of the big splashes in the offseason for the team in the desert, but another turnover by Team Gray. They had a 14 to one run earlier in the quarter. Ball back to Team Hall with 107 to play opening quarter. Ali Chagre with six to lead her squad. First time captain. Four points for Haley Jones, who is on the bench for Team Hall right now. Mincy at the point. Pull up Jay. Mitchell skies for the board. Off the back of Engsler. Cloud speeds ahead. Looking for a two for one, perhaps. And Mitchell drew a whistle. Mm. They said continuation. Mincy is beside herself. Well, that's obviously what Team Gray wants to do. That was the game plan coming in, was we are going to push it. Whatever guard rebounds the basketball, we are going to push in transition. Everybody else run, Phil, we're going to try to score early. Hey, hey. Tiffany Mitchell connects from the line. First year in the Athletes Unlimited, 29-year-old. Signed with the Connecticut Sun in the offseason. It's her new stop in the W after some time with Minnesota for one year. Long time in Indiana with the Fever. Three ball Jackson airmailed at a shot clock differential of five seconds for Cloud and Company. Gray in the triple threat, feeds it inside, and an easy bucket for Tiana Muldrow. The creativity by Gray, so unselfish. Well, I, again, I love the ball movement by Team Gray as well. Not so much just in the half court, but they're getting out, they're pushing in transition, and that particular time, Tiana Muldrow running the lane for an easy two. Mincy tries the scoop with the right two seconds. Gray lets the clock wind down. Alicia Gray with six points, five assists, three rebounds in just the first quarter. Each member of Team Gray earned 60 points. That is a way to start off the weekend for Team Gray, up 21-9 at the end of one. Season three of Athletes Unlimited is off and running through one quarter. Team Gray leads Team Hull 21 to nine. Those of you that might be new to Athletes Unlimited, each week 
each team captain drafts a new team. Four captains, four teams. Odyssey Sim will wear gold for a fifth time in a row. Eight-time captain, Odyssey Sims, the league's returning leading scorer from the leaderboard. Air Hearn, first overall selection. We've talked about Lexi Hull, reigning defensive player of the year. Ruthie Hebert was Team Hull's number one pick. A lot of news and notes from Monday's draft. Why don't we welcome in Savannah Collins, who has all the breakdown for us. Hey, excited to join you. I'll talk a little bit about how these teams take, came together and what these two captains were looking for. S Savannah, one of the notes you had on Team Hull, hybrid players trying to create mismatches. Can you take us in the inside the mind of Lexi Hull and what she explained to you about how this team was constructed? Absolutely. Lexi said that she wanted a team that is going to play as one. As you've noticed, we kind of haven't seen anybody step up as their leading scorer yet. I do think that might have been a little bit intentional for Lexi in her pick. She talked about how not only do we not really have a dominant personality, but I want a team that's going to be able to feed off of each other. But I think when you're stepping into game one of the week like this, it may take a minute to figure out who is going to step up into those type roles. It's maybe why they got out to a little bit of a slow start here in the first quarter. Well, and to, to your point, Savannah, there are definitely some newcomers on that team, but my question is regarding Leash. You said that she said the first person she called was Nas Hillman when Absolutely. she found out she was going to be captain. <laughs> Alicia found out, okay, I'm leading my week one team, picking up the phone, I'm calling Nas. If anybody tuned into last season, you know exactly who that is. She was a multi-week captain, ended up being a medalist, and she said, okay, how do I build a practice plan? What should I look for in the draft? And those are things that the two of them talked about, and it was so sweet because they have such a great bond from last season at AU, obviously with the Atlanta Dream. But Alicia said, Nas is here with me, even though she's not here right now. You can see that and how that she's just stepped into this role because she kind of got to learn that from Nas doing it last year. They were always together. Nas is starring for uh, in the WNBL in Australia, making her presence felt there. Team Gray, first two picks for Alicia Gray were point guards. Mitchell, Cloud, and they've been very unselfish, evidently, getting out to a 12-point lead, 8 of 15 shooting. They have, uh, going after one quarter, Savannah, eight field goals, six assists. So they're sharing the rock as Gray picks up two more to build the Team Gray lead. Take us inside the dynamic and how Alicia saw this coming together. Absolutely. She said off the bat, I want to establish some strong point guards. And she wanted someone that she could go to and knew that they were going to score on the wings. Now, if you stepped into Team Gray's practice, what you would have seen is that they are so collaborative. In the minute, middle of practice, everybody would kind of stop to say what they were seeing. And you saw this from Natasha Cloud, Sydney Colson, too, Tiffany Mitchell. Nobody was scared to step up and say, hey, what if we try this? And that's what Alicia Gray was looking for. She wanted voices who were going to come together. And if you kind of pay attention to this bench and watch how they communicate, you can see how those picks are playing into the way they communicate on the court tonight. Yeah, Savannah, my, my last question for you is, so both Alicia Gray and Lexi are first-time captains. Their second year in AU, what, did they talk about what their expectations were at all coming into this season? Yeah, both of them discussed how they have things that they've been working on in this WNBA offseason that they want to step into this season and put to the test. For Alicia Gray, she said, I'm challenging myself to sometimes be more selfish, be a little bit more aggressive. She said she'll have teammates that'll say, hey, shoot that. She goes, but in her W season, I don't, I don't want to take that shot. So here at AU, she's trying to establish taking those shots and then being in a leadership role like this, being a captain is the perfect situation for her. And same for Lexi. Lexi's just trying to make those fine tweaks as she leads into her W season, really trying to establish her role and being confident as a shooter, being confident as a leader, because that's expected of her with the Indiana Fever too. This is their ground to test out all those things that they've been looking for and working on, and especially in a captain role. You know, Cheryl, I put Savannah Collins up against uh, many draft analysts in any sport around the country. <laughs> I mean, Listen, how does she keep I would do the same the thing. Beginning. Savannah, that's good stuff. Hey, thank y'all. It all goes back to these captains that they'll let me just pick their brains at these practices. <laughs> Savannah Collins, chair chat. Great to have Savannah with us. And we'll talk to her again real soon. We'll have her analysis breakdown of the traps for Kelsey Mitchell and Odyssey Sims in the next game, Team Sims, Team Mitchell, right after this. Oh, nice move by Hall. Turns and fires, knocks it down.
team captain first bucket of tonight's game. Well, you know what? One thing about Lexi is she's, as we said in the open, she's one of those players that even if she doesn't score a lot of points, she can affect the game in so many different ways because she's going to defend. She's going to guard the other team's best player. She's going to rebound. She's going to get out in passing lanes. She's going to find a way to get involved with the game and help her team win. Ball drove for three. Nice chase down rebound by Grace Berger. Boulders ahead. Oh, that's nice. Stops on the brakes. Haley Jones goes to work. Jones rattles it in. All propelled by Berger there on the break. Yeah, Grace Berger just doing a really nice job of pushing the ball in transition, keeping her head up, looking for her shot, but then she found Haley Jones filling the lane. And Haley Jones is a nice size for a guard. She calls herself a point forward sometimes, too. A really unique role. Alicia Gray came to Dallas ready to go. 13 for Gray. Four boards, four assists. Quick two on the other end for Jones. Alicia Gray in attack mode. Drives, outlet, open three. Sydney Colson. So, so are we calling her Sydney Colson or are we calling her the face of the lead? <laughs> <laughs> Her and TP. I don't want to leave TP out. Those are the faces of the league. My bad. The Sid and TP show. We have a special edition here in Dallas. No, no, no. Something tells me I feel like we have to see that at some point. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll get you in. Keep those a little two cameo. In line. A little cameo. <laughs> Jones has been the energizer for Team Hull, but Sydney Colson cookies knocks it away. Back to Team Gray. Yeah, Sid Colson, she's another player. Oh, okay. She is going to bring the energy whenever she gets in the game. I, I just have so much respect for what she brings, what she does, understanding her role. Backdoor opens, plays on in stride. Sydney Colson, chairperson of AU Pro Basketball's Player Executive Committee. Had a great line the other day, fully admit she would not be where she is. A WNBA champion with the Las Vegas Aces had it not been for AU to uncover more layers of her game. And, and Sid spoke on it, but she's not the only player. I can think of a handful of AU players who may not have that shot in the W had they not come to AU and played here. Lexi Brown, another player who played very well the first year. Signed, just signed a deal with the Los Angeles Sparks, and she also credits a lot of that due to her coming and being a part of AU. Lexi's first time in eight months playing basketball, coming off an injured summer. And she was elated to get out there in the scrimmages. Pull-up jumper looks smooth. Grace Berger. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. That was sweet. And Team Hall remains in striking distance more than midway through the second, down by nine. Sydney Colson at the controls for Team Gray. And we'll stay over here. Nine to shoot for Team Gray. Alicia Gray, her team is dialed in. Shooting 48% from the floor. Gray with 13 points, five assists, four boards. Team Gray in the orange leading Team Hall, 33-24. Opening night, Athletes Unlimited Season 3, 33-24 Team Gray leads. Let's go into the game now with the Air National Guard. Essence Carson, third year with Athletes Unlimited, 13 years in the WNBA, a former champion with the Los Angeles Sparks, brings it on both ends. And you, you said it, the vet who, uh, she seems younger 
uh, out there playing well, it. And just, just the leadership that she brings, you know, it's, it's always nice to have that bet on your team that can, can, can bring something different. Essence can still, like, why she's not playing in the W, I don't know. But she can absolutely still get it done. And Haley Jones right Haley now Jones. is also one that's getting it done. Haley Jones helped the Atlanta Dream to a playoff berth last year and something she thinks she can uncover in her first AU season. Not only the rest and recovery from not going overseas, a break after college, but also how her role can evolve on the court going forward as a pro. And that's already taking place in her first game. 10 points in 12 minutes. Yeah, because she is out here playing against some really good pros. Hard screen set, open three. Team Gray, no, this is a seven point game. Team Gray once built a giant double digit lead. Mincy on the break from three, no. Team Gray once led by 14, 25 11 early in the second. Natasha Cloud surveys, fakes the spin, tough right handed hook. Well, you know, one thing the team Gray has gotten away from in the second quarter is pushing the ball in transition as well as moving the ball in the half court, which is what they did in the first quarter. The reason why they had that lead. Angsler, the hustle, nabbed by Danny McCray, hits Hall, swish. Five point game. Team Hall has made a push at 8-0 run. The one thing that Lexi Hall is going to do is continue to compete. There is a lot of basketball left. Engsler tries to contain the handle. Numbers for Team Hall. Carson, back out Jones. They allow Engsler to catch back up to the play. There's the hustle by Emily Engsler. <laughs> Just opportunity. I'm not sure they realized they had a five on four. That would appear to be the case. Bulldog to the bench. Mitchell, Colson, Cloud, Engsler, and Gray. So a smaller lineup with Bulldog on the bench for Team Gray. 2-10 to play in the half, and the lead is five. But Team Hall has caught momentum, 8-0 run. McCray backs down, fall away jumper. Offensive rebound, Lexi Hall. Stolen by Colson. They push it. Cloud, everything but the finish. Haley Jones on the break. Mincy. Track me. <laughs> But that is exactly the way both of these teams want to play, is get out and push the ball in transition. We have a whistle away from the ball after Gray missed the jumper. We come up on 90 seconds to go in the quarter. Team Gray won the first, 21 to nine, looking for Hall, Team Hall, I should say, is looking for their first quarter win of the weekend, leading the quarter 19 to 12. And you have more experience than I do covering this league, but you, you can't lose back-to-back -back quarters. That could be problematic, and then you're playing catch-up, right, for the rest of the weekend. Well, you, you would like to not lose back-to-back -back quarters, but the thing is, because of the way the scoring goes, and this year with quarter wins being 60 points and game wins being 180, even if you lose back-to-back -back quarters and you win another quarter or even win the game, Good point. you're still going to find yourself right right where you want to be good point if the quarters are neck and neck and you end up coming through in the clutch in the fourth quarter it's a good point that's what makes it so fascinating though yeah and and again that that 180 points is a big difference from 150 points last year it's a meaty number seven seconds on the timer team gray coming off 10 straight empty trips on the right side but a tale of two quarters for both teams Team Gray now over the limit, so now Team Hall has free throws going the way, uh, going on this side. Once you hit five fouls, just like in women's college, women's pro, means free throws. McCray off the mark. Danny McCray, 26th pick overall on Monday. Third year 
in AU out of Ole Miss. So here, here's what I'm going to say, right? So if you get Give it to foul, me. well, if you get foul yeah. on a shot and you go to the free throw line, you shouldn't be penalized if you miss them. You missed the free throw? Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Come on. I'm just like, I, that, How I often do I'm trying coaches to be... emphasize <laughs> making your free throws? Well, you know, for a missed free throw, though, it's minus 10 points. So if you get foul, you should be able to go to the free throw line. And yeah, if you make it, then you get the points. But if you miss it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem very fair. I, I, I hear you. It doesn't, but I guess it is. Maybe you have a that good choice. You, that maybe means we, you got to make the free throw. Maybe we should be like, well, let, let us just take the ball out of bounds. See? To pass up if you're not throws. a good free throw shooter, maybe then, you would do that. Doesn't that kind of question your mental toughness if you don't want to go take free throws? I agree. There's a lot, there's so many nuances <laughs> to this. It is really fascinating and such a fun dynamic. Of course, we break down the, the regular numbers, points, rebounds, assists, but it's next level. The strategy. Mitchell, three ball spins out. And Team Hall can hold for the final shot. They have the quarter in hand. Leading 21-14. Haley Jones, a big reason for their search. Uh, Haley Jones started off the game attacking. In this second quarter, she has absolutely been the difference in this game. And it really has been the second unit. Four seconds. Team Gray wanted a foul call. So I think that their issue was the shot clock hit zero, the clock froze. And they're going to take a look. Once again, our crew chief tonight for our first game of opening weekend, Jeff Wooten. So I think, Cheryl, the idea here is you add a couple more seconds and that would allow Team Gray to get another possession? Well, they absolutely want another possession, but even if they scored on the possession, they still wouldn't win this quarter. This is true. 21-14, Team Hall leads the second quarter. Again, a wrinkle from last year. The team with the winning quarter, you win 10 more points than what last year was. It was 50 points last year and the year before this season, 60 points. And team that wins the game, 180 points. And we've been told they're going to let the call stand on the court. We're going to hit halftime. Team Gray once built a 12-point lead. And it got to 14 at one point, 25-11 in the first quarter, early second. Then Team Hall wins quarter number two, ends the second on a 10-2 run in the final five minutes, 30 seconds. We've reached halftime. Opening night, Team Gray leads Team Hall, Athletes Unlimited, season three. One half in the books. at Essence Carson and how Team Hall got back in this basketball game, trailing by five to Team Gray. Game one, night one of weekend one. Athletes Unlimited season three. Team Gray got off to a hot start, outscored Team Hall by 11 in the first. And then Team Hall led by Haley Jones. First year AU player with 10 points, Ali Chagre with 13, we'll get you set for the second half. Brendan Glasheen and Cheryl Swoops, the Hall of Famer. So hey, we're underway, it's a lot of fun. 
fast-paced opening quarter. Team Gray was cooking, getting on the move. Alicia Gray at the controls, involving everybody. And then Team Hull, the hybrid style that they developed through their draft, disruptive on the defensive end, and that it led to some easy baskets. Well, one thing about Team Hall and Lexi Hall is she's a competitor. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what the score is. She's going to find a way to get her team back in the game. And for Team Gray, Alicia Gray came out, first-time captain, and said, I may be a first-time captain, but this is what I do. I know how to play basketball. And she got it done in so many different ways. Attacking, nice free throw line, pull up jumper. Getting all the way to the hole, nice spin. I see you leash. Moving without the basketball, nice shot fake, one dribble pull up. It's good. Alicia Gray has scored from everywhere on the floor in the first half, and I would look to her to continue to do that the second half. 206 game points for Alicia Gray in that first half alone. Nine turnovers for Team Gray. They kept that number to just a couple in the first quarter, so credit to Team Hull for being disruptive. The rebound margin has shrunk, and look, Team Hull, they've got a, a great shooter. Teresa Plaisance was second in the league last year in three-point makes, but this has been a game uh, feasting on taking advantage of the opponent's mistakes. That's what it feels so far. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's been on both sides of the ball for sure. Team Gray, for Team Hull. They absolutely have taken advantage of what the defense has given them. But Haley Jones for Team Hull, she stepped up in that second quarter in particular, and she is the reason why they are right back in this game. The point forward participating in her first Athletes Unlimited season said her biggest challenge to improvement in her first year in the W, consistency. Off to a good start tonight, and defensively, Team Hall denies Alicia Gray, who is now 5 of 10 from the floor, started 3 of 4 tonight. One thing, you, you talked about Haley Jones, um, this being her first season in AU. Not, not only is this good for her physically and, and for her game, but also from a mental standpoint. You know, you, you go from college to the pros and you don't have the type of season that you had in college. It's nice to be able to come here, play in AU, against some great competition and hold your own. Alicia Gray Oof. with the lay-in plus a foul. And Alicia Gray said, I can hold my own too. Thank you very much, Miss Swoops. But Alicia Gray, she came out, shot the three, didn't make it. It wasn't her ball. She didn't like it. But here, just puts it on the floor, attacks the basket, drawing the foul from TP. 92% free throw shooter. Got to the line often last year. Now three of three at the line tonight. And an eight-point lead for Team Gray. Leash with 16. Hunting, facilitating, keeping everyone in the right spot. Natasha Cloud digging in defensively on Jones. The leading scorers on each team, members of the Atlanta Dream, Haley Jones and Ali Chagray. And there is a reason why Tosh Cloud is defending Haley Jones, because she knows too, Haley Jones is the reason why they got back in this game. And Tosh takes a lot of pride in her defense. And she said, you know what? Let me come guard you for a Haley Jones. Two-time all defense in the W, fast break, fast break. They're baking in the paint. Engsler for two, and Team Gray leads by 10. Nice fast break. Still no points for Team Hall here in the third. Similar start to the game for Team Gray in the first quarter. Jones draws a double. Open shooter, Grace Berger. Grace Berger! I am becoming a fan, Grace Berger. She's a competitor. Tiffany Mitchell flexes on Team Hall. Selly with the teammates coming back on defense. I think Tiffany Mitchell thought she got fouled on that. <laughs> I mean, we we both blinked and suddenly she scored. That was a fast possession. I know. And we'll show it to you again in case you missed it. Yeah. And Alicia Gray just doing everything, getting her hands on the ball. Inksler finds Bulldog back to Inksler for an easy layup. And Grace Berger from deep. It's Haley. good. Ooh. Haley Jones flew in the lane, split the defense, couldn't find the finish. Cloud the crisp pass. Mitchell hands it off Gray. Defense off balance. Bulgok swings it. Ball moving here for Team Gray. 
but they lost it. One Lexi too many Hull. Passes. Ooh, Lexi Hall spins everything but the finish there. Heaved ahead and Gray collides with Lexi Hall, who sprinted back on defense. The two captains, two first time captains, get tangled up. You gotta love it. You just gotta love it. It's playoff intensity every quarter. Right? Every moment. Because they are playing for something. And Alicia Gray, oh. I'm glad that that could have been a lot worse than it was. Leaderboard is being updated as we speak. We'll do our best to keep up with it. Uh, Ali Shagre with 16.6 boards, five assists, not to mention the quarter win to open up the night. And right now in the third quarter, Team Gray leads Team Hall seven to three. So many ways you can tally up points. I mean, we're having this discussion in the first half, you know, missing free throws and turning the ball over. And that is, if, if you're talking just individually for the 20 players featured in this game, the turnovers could be problematic for them. Just talking stat points, the combined turnover totals 19. Cloud streaming, switching the right hand. Tosh Cloud. Okay, Tosh, I see you. That was nice. Tasha Cloud, two years ago, second on the leaderboard in the inaugural season of Athletes Unlimited. Former member of the player executive committee gives it up. Open three, Bulgok. That's how you run the break. Timeout, Team Hall. It is 12 to 3, Team Gray, in the first three plus minutes of quarter number three. And Team Gray, Tasha Cloud just pushing in transition, splitting two is nice, Tasha, I see you. Okay, big girl, she said, I got you, it's nice. <laughs> Similar to the first quarter, Team Gray erupts to start half number two, outscoring Team Hull 12-3, and Cheryl, Natasha Cloud, Four points, four assists is igniting Team Gray right now. Yeah, Tasha Cloud has just come out this second half, not only doing it on the defensive end, but offensively, just pushing in transition, splitting two, and she liked it too. I see the smile, Tosh. Natasha Cloud last year finished 13th on the leaderboard, about five rebounds a game, 14 points. Third in the league in assists. Two years ago, number one in assists, an established veteran presence in backcourts in the WNBA. Eight long years with the Washington Mystics. A lot of winning, championship pedigree, and now she is taking her talents to the Phoenix Mercury, which they are an intriguing story for this upcoming season. Now that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Tasha Cloud also uses her platform maybe better than anyone in the sport. Tremendous leader on and off the court. Oh, absolutely. One of the best, if not the best. Oh, that's pretty. Good offense and good use of the timeout by so, Team Hull. Sorry, one thing that Team Hull's gonna have to do is absolutely move the basketball, make the defense have to work, because Team Gray right now, defensively, they're making everything tough for Team Hull. Berger in the paint, kick it to Hull. Indiana Fever teammates, skip pass, open three. Blazons rattles it home. 5 one out of the timeout. This is a nine point game. And TP, that is what she is going to bring. She can just flat out stroke that thing. Nine year WNBA veteran, NBA, uh, pardon me, a WNBA champion with the Las Vegas Aces two years ago. Her podcast partner, Sydney Colson, won the title last year, as well as Kirsten Bell, who we'll see later tonight. Jones, Anxler defending, Haley Jones, crossover, scoop it with the right, got it to go, Haley Jones. Come on, Haley. 7-0 run. 
<laughs> Ailey Jones with 12 points to lead Team Hall. Gray with 16. Stays on the floor. Mitchell contested. Bulldog trying to get back defensively. Berger fall away. Engsler cleared. Plazon thinks it was last touched by Engsler. This part always cracks me up. Each team like points to the other team. <laughs> oh, it was off you, it was off you. Like, take I know. A <laughs> this is the new thing now, the, the twirling of the finger. Take a look at it, take a look at it. As if the referee's gonna say, you know what, I believe him. Well, the best now is with the coach's challenge. And not only can TP just knock it down from three, Grace Berger finding her posting up a nice, easy deuce, but she said, I would much rather be behind the arc. TP can shoot it from distance. Ranked second in Athletes Unlimited last year, made 35 threes, shot 44% from deep, and tonight, two of four, one of two players in double figures. It appears we may have a captain's challenge. A captain or other determined team representative may initiate replay review of certain events subject to the provisions of the rules set out below. That includes a called personal foul or a call out of bounds. And the out of bounds is the featured mistake. That's off the toes, it seems, of Emily Engsler. The Plaisance may have had a case. I think Emily thought she got fouled. Of course she did, right? Of course she did, yeah, right. <laughs> you didn't commit fouls, though, right? Never. Never. Yeah. Mm -mm. You know where I learned that one? My friend Ashley Battle. She's a... Uh... AB committed fouls, though. Oh, she, but she tells me all the time. I've learned now working with former <laughs> players to always say, you didn't foul, right? Like, that's like my, my go-to. It makes them feel better about themselves. And they, How'd you though. know? You knew. She did. AB, <laughs> AB. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> that re led to a timeout on the floor, and it appears the challenge for Team Hall was successful. Call overturned. So, again, it can be the captain who decides to challenge or another team representative. Karima Christmas Kelly is the facilitator of Team Hall. No head coaches in AU, the players run the show. All about the players. Night one, game one of our doubleheader. Plays on. Angsler, feisty defense. Jones on the handoff. They switch defensively. Cloud comes in with the double. Six to shoot. Carson was open for three, but instead, Mincy takes it to the rack. <laughs> and that's, 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 a vet, that's a vet move. She was like, I know you see me right here. <laughs> and Team Hall looks to add to this 7 0 run. Team Gray winning the quarter 12 to 10, a seven point lead overall. Mincy at the line. Second year AU guard out of Maryland. Some stints overseas in Israel, also in the WNBL in Australia. Speak of talent, Australia, they have some talent to play. Without question. One of my faves, the all time great LJ Lauren Jackson. The sport as Engsler finishes and won. Both in the W and in the men's professional level, the, the league has become global. And it really is fun to watch some of the skill sets that come from all over yeah. the different pro leagues. Emily Inksler is one of these players that we haven't talked a whole lot about, but she has a nice game, nice little shot fake. Got Essence Carson in the air, put it on the floor, finished dropping the foul. Offensively, I love how she's aggressive and she attacks, but even on the defensive end, she's uh, she's getting it done. Engsler stood out in the scrimmages last week, had 14 and 11, was efficient, blocking shots, swiping the basketball. 
trying to carve out another role in the W this coming summer, signed to a training camp contract with the Washington Mystics. She had discussed how AU is the right move for her. There she is defensively. Emily Engsler pounds the rock on the block, couldn't finish. Rebound Hull. Four minutes to go in the third. Team Gray leads the quarter 15-11. Nice offense by Team Hull. Basket on the block for Danny McCray. Excellent. Finds Gray back door. Look what I found. You know, shot fakes, ball fakes, pass fakes, it's like a lost art. Like, players don't use it enough, but that last possession, Inksler just did a nice little pass fake. Found Alicia Gray cutting back door. Carson, that was a clean release. And a big shot to cut it to six. Well, that speaks to Savannah. We had Savannah Collins on earlier to assess the drafts for both teams, and it speaks to the open dialogue that Team Gray had in their practices this week. That communication to find each other off the ball. Gray splash. Answers a three of her own. 21 in the game for Alicia Gray. Yeah, Brendan, to your point, that was one thing that Alicia Gray said she wanted. She wanted energy. She wanted her teammates to speak up. And, and if they see something, tell her, let her know. And you can see from every player on the floor, everybody's stepping up, everybody's speaking. And I, I, I just love the team basketball that they're playing right now. Team captain Lexi Hull does her part. Second chance points for Team Hull. Mincy's first basket of the game. Natasha Cloud putting the defense on skates. Come on, Tosh. The speed and the attention to detail defensively by Team Gray has really stood out in night one. Lexi Hall, too many steps. Traveling goal on Team Hall. Great day. Alicia Gray is taking Dallas by storm with this opening night performance. Yeah, Team Gray, they're just moving the basketball. Alicia Gray cutting back door for a nice, easy layup pass from Inks Inksler. They're just getting it done, moving without the basketball. Always going to be tough to defend a team when you're moving without the basketball. 22 made field goals for Team Gray, 15 assists. It's a high rate. Bulgok around the world. Haley Jones had to spin around, couldn't catch up. Oh, wow. Bulgok. Oh, well, big girl. Elusive. I do. She's nice. Jones with the push pass, open three, Hull. Berger. Lexi Hull is doing all she can off the ball to instill that belief. 59-48, 124 to go in the third, and in this quarter, Team Gray leads 24-18. Well, and we know what they're playing for. Team Gray lost the second quarter, so now they're coming back wanting, trying to win this third quarter. Had a five-point lead at halftime, not content. You can't be at AU. There is importance in every quarter, in every game. Tasha Cloud was concerned that she did not draw a foul there, so they're going to call the foul on Bulgok, an offensive foul, so we're going back the other direction. Is that what that was? She was hitting herself in the face saying she got fouled? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for uh, backing me up there, Cheryl. I was just making sure. That's what I thought. Just making sure. Hey, sometimes they miss them. It happens. Oh, there's the defense. No foul there. Jones sticks with it. I love how Haley Jones, she just continues to attack. It doesn't matter if she gets a shot blocked or not. She stays in the play and is able to get the rebound and put it back. This is week one opening night. I mean, we would have been probably impressed if we saw this in week two out of Haley Jones. This Absolutely. Is, this is happening tonight, Absolutely. opening night. And, and I would like to think. <laughs> Flex on him, Natasha Cloud. That time she did draw a foul. Yeah, she meant that. 
Lauren Mincy doing all she can to keep Tosh away from the basket. Tosh just puts her head down, splits two, three people. Gets to the whole finish and draws the foul. They got some dogs on Team yeah. Cloud. Yeah, some dogs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cherry on top, three-point play complete. Natasha Cloud has eight points in the game, seven in the quarter. Jones full head of steam. Cloud knocks it out of bounds. Just those deflections making it complicated for Team Hall to get their sets. Well, and that's one thing, even if you don't get a steal, but if you're being active with your hands, you get deflections, it's gonna take time off the shot clock and it's gonna force Team Hall to have to rush a shot. Mincy, Hezzy, fall away, shot is blocked. Bulgok doing her part, plays on, it's clean up. Tiffany Mitchell, a little shaken up, coming back on the other end. 13 seconds, Team Gray can hold for the final shot. We were chatting pregame, just watching layup lines and thinking, well, does Team Gray have enough length to match up with the hybrid positions of Team Hall? And Bulgok has been an anchor in the paint. Listen, Adu has and done Exler it all. Too. Offensively, she's knocking down threes, posting up, putting it on the floor. But to your point, defensively though, she is controlling the paint. Cloud peeks at the clock, knifes a bounce pass into Mitchell with three, Mitchell with two, outlet Cloud, three in the air. Despite the miss, Team Gray wins quarter number three. So they take the team one at two one edge in quarters one tonight. They win at 27-22. A 10-point lead overall. We make the turn for home. Fourth quarter is next. Athletes Unlimited here in Dallas, Texas. 62-52. Team Gray leads Team Hall. Fourth quarter coming up. Team Gray with quarter victories in the first and the third. And maybe if Team Hall has a similar second quarter, if you get themselves back in this game. Big news in women's basketball today, moments before our first game of the weekend tipped off. Iowa's Caitlin Clark has declared for the 2024 WNBA draft. Draft day is set for Monday, April 15th. And here is Caitlin's statement, both on Instagram and on Twitter, on the precipice of becoming the all-time leading scorer in major women's college basketball history. Passed Kelsey Plum on that list on Wednesday of this past week. Knocking down three balls all season and just a bucket has been a big part of the rise in popularity of women's college basketball this year. Cheryl, it's going to be really fun to watch Caitlin at the next level. Yeah, she passed Kelsey Plum, passed Lynette Woodard the other night. I, I don't know who's more relieved, Caitlin or her fans or the WNBA, yeah. but I mean, great news for the league, great news for women's basketball, and you know, best best of luck. It's it's going to be an exciting time wherever she ends up going. Um, they're going to be getting a good one. To use a similar analogy, like this time of year, we see like if there's a big story in Major League Baseball in spring training this day and age with baseball, that's a big deal. The fact that a player declaring for the draft is generating this kind of buzz. That is great news for the sport. Yeah, it, it's right? not. Like that's, it's, it's elevated it. It's not just good for women's college basketball. It is, to your point, it's, it's good for, for women's basketball in general. And, you know, Caitlin has had that effect on, on the game. And I think right now people are probably wondering, we know Paige Beckers is staying. Right. Uh, what's Angel Reese going to do? What's Cameron Brink going to do? There's so many question marks, so many what ifs. And, you know, regardless of who comes out, who doesn't come out, it's, it's still going to be a really good draft. And uh, I'm excited to see what happens. But exactly what you just did. Okay, what's next? The, the hunger for what is next to develop in the story off the court is why it's great news, I think, for the growth of women's basketball. So, big news of the day, and of course, Athletes Unlimited Season 3 underway Who tonight. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe she'll play in Athletes Unlimited next year. I just put it out there. <laughs> the pitch has been sent. Fourth quarter's underway. Team Gray leading by 13 points. 
The gold team led by Odyssey Sims, fifth time she will captain the gold squad, eight time captain in the three years of AU's existence, takes on Team Mitchell, Kelsey Mitchell. That is the next game tonight, which comes your way at 9 p.m. Eastern. Great to have those of you joining us on the WNBA app, free to view. A strong W presence of half the player pool in the W. Cloud's pull up really has come alive. Natasha Cloud in the second half. But you know, Tasha, she can score the basketball, yes. but she's that type of point guard that is always looking to get other players involved first until you do something that kind of rubs her the wrong way. Alicia Gray, the steal, <laughs> Colson, bounce, entry. That's how you run the break. Bulgok with the lay in. Nice pass, Sid. Biggest lead for Team Gray tonight, 17 points. Berger contested and a foul called from up top. So Grace Berger heads to the free throw line. Already a 7-0 lead in the quarter. I, th I think that's also jumped out. The fast starts in three or four quarters for Team Gray. Yeah, Team Gray, they're at their best when they're out in transition. Last play, Alicia Gray pushing the ball in transition, finding Tiana Muldrow running the floor for an easy two. Yeah, I beg your pardon. That was Muldrow with the basket last possession. Cray checks in for Team Hall. Grace Berger with seven points. Plaisance with 12. Haley Jones leads the blue squad with 14. Alicia Gray with 21 points, 11 for Natasha Cloud. It is a balanced score sheet after Gray. Muldrow, five straight points. Listen, everybody on this squad for Team Gray is shooting that thing tonight. First AU season for Tiana Muldrow. East Orange, New Jersey native. Played her college hoop at West Virginia. Five seasons there. The fifth leading scorer in program history. Mincy with a swish on the contested triple. That was a tough shot. Because that dude was out, hand up, and Mincy still found a way to knock it down. Oh, Gray, the crossover created separation. Alicia Gray, third three tonight, 24 points. <laughs> Ankle breaker. She was just here, Bree January, the team facilitator. Where is she going? She don't know. She don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just playing. Alicia Gray. Oh, sometimes you can't say nothing, but ooh, that was nasty. Leash. 75 57. Let's welcome in our first chair chat oh. participant of the weekend, Tiffany Mitchell of Team Gray. Tiffany, can you hear us? I can hear you. All right, Cheryl, uh, Tiffany Mitchell, the newest member of the Connecticut Sun. Hi, Tiff. Hey, Cheryl. Well, first of all, why are you standing and not sitting? You're not going back in the game right now. Oh, I'm trying to get some <laughs> are you the, out Are there. you the facilitator? Or like, what do you got going on here? No, but I know she's yeah. like, because she's like, yeah. okay, what, what do y'all want? Because yeah. I got to get back in the game. Basically. No, okay, so here, here's my question to you. What made you decide to play AU this season? Um, so for me, I've been playing overseas my whole career, and I think, you know, I needed some time at home. This mental reset, um, physically, I just needed a break instead of playing all year. So here I am. <laughs> and it, it's the first game. I know y'all had scrimmages, but the first game, um, what, what are your thoughts so far? Say that again. What are your thoughts so far? It's your first game. Y'all had some scrimmages, but what are your thoughts? Um, it's fun. I mean, I have to get the opportunity to play with a lot of players in the league that I probably won't have a chance to. So um, it's just cool seeing different personalities, um, their IQ of the game. So I've, I've been having a good time. So 
understandably, Ellie Chagre was the captain. The yeah. South Carolina family stays true down here in Dallas. I'm curious, <laughs> you being the first pick for Team <laughs> Ray, did you have an influence on the picks after that? Like, was it kind of like a domino effect? I mean, for sure, we trying to put together the, the best team possible. Um, you know, we know the quarters are important, so it doesn't really matter. It, it does matter statistically what each person does, but I think if you have a good team, um, everything's going to fall the way it needs to. So, so when you say you try to put together the best team possible, that means you got to have the Gamecocks together. Basically, I mean. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's I not just, a good team if just a Gamecocks is sure. not on it. <laughs> just making sure. So I do want to say this, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you did have your jersey retired. I did. Correct? Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thank that's you, big time. You. I appreciate it, but I got to get back to my team. I'm trying to get me a little bucket real quick for the game over. All right, <laughs> Tiffany Mitchell, right. our first chair chat of the weekend. First year point guard in AU heading to the Connecticut Sun next off season. We appreciate her time. 77-59, Team Gray in front. Stay ready, y'all. Bring the energy when we in there. Do what we do. Get downhill. Just play like we home, you know? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Essence Carson, our mic'd up player tonight of Team Hull, tries to help her squad get back in it here. Down eight in the quarter, 15-7. 18 overall, 4.41 to go. Opening night, our first game of two on this Thursday. Year three of Athletes Unlimited Women in Basketball. Brendan Glasheen and Cheryl Swoops with you on the broadcast this weekend. There's Carson holding up her end of the bargain. Essence has such a sweet stroke. She Even took a plan at Rutgers. She was always that type of player. She could just shoot the basketball, and she has not lost that at all. Carson tonight has drilled two three-pointers. That's 60 points right there. You get 30 points per three-pointer. The leaderboard point structure, and taking a peek at that during the media break, the top five players on the leaderboard from just this game are all from Team Gray. Well, when you, it, it's no surprise to me when you look at... Look at the scoreboard, especially. And, right. and you have four players right now in, in double figures. Cloud, Adu, Gray, and Muldrow. Quiet 10 from yeah. Tiana Muldrow. <laughs> but had that 5-0 run. Tiffany Mitchell promised another bucket. And there it is. <laughs> she was like, y'all, I got to go. I got to get back in the game. Mitchell into double figures now with 10, the fifth yep. member of Team Gray in double figures. There's balance on this team and their unselfish willingness. And I would think when Leash put this team together during the draft, this is exactly what she had in mind, balance scoring from everyone on the floor. Colson tried to finish midair, hunting back on defense the other end. Saw Jones use that move earlier, offensive rebound. I, I will say, while the score is lopsided, credit to Team Hall with nine offensive rebounds. That will help the individual stat lines, that's for sure. Absolutely. A rebound in AU. An offensive rebound, actually more points than a defensive rebound. You get 10 points individually for an offensive rebound and five for a D-board. Two and a half to go in regulation. Team Gray leads 79-64. Olgok falling away, swish. Come on, big girl. I, 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 I don't know this, so I'm gonna ask you or anybody. Sure. She, she's not signed with a WNBA team, is she? No. She needs to be. 12 games in two seasons. Overall for Adu Bulgak, 31-year-old center out of Florida State. Goodness, but, I mean, both bigs have fit in seamlessly with the guard play in Bulgak and Emily Engsler. Yeah, and I, what I love about Adu is 
she can score in so many different ways. I love her pace. She doesn't get fed up. She recognizes mismatches. She has a smaller player on her. She's going to post her up. She has a bigger player on her. She's pulling her away from the basket, shooting the three or putting it on the deck. Whoever is listening, that young lady needs to be in somebody's training camp. Four-time WNBA champion and the Hall of Famer has made her case for Adut Bulgak. I mean, but she's just getting it done, like I said, from everywhere on the floor, filling top of the key in transition, knocking it down, big girl running the lane for an easy deuce, squaring up, putting it on the deck, getting to the hole. I see you, big girl. Nice pass from Tosh, another three from D. Like that, that's just textbook basketball right there. Olgek was drafted by the New York Liberty in 2016 with the number 12 pick. Gray looked for that time, but Plaisance uses her length to interrupt the passing lane. 81-67. It's 19 to 15, Team Gray in the quarter. So still something to play for here for Team Hall. It'd be really nice if Team Hall can find a way to win this quarter and rack up that 60 points per player. You called out using head fakes and shot fakes earlier, and that one was a good move by Jones. Everything but the finish there. It's 90 seconds to go. Again, quarter wins, 60 points awarded to each player on the team that wins the quarter. Mm. Angsler mm. shot out of a cannon. Oh, yeah. Emily Angsler, the sixth Ooh. player to edge double figures for Team Gray. And Inks are getting the block on defense. That's what you want from your team. Not just one player getting it done. But for Team Gray, they have six players in double figure. Got the AU vet, Tosh Cloud, in front of us, shouting to her team, time, time, hold it. Mitchell knocks down a three. T Tiffany Mitchell said, oh no, I need these 30 points. <laughs> I need these 30 points for my individual stat line. There's no other league in any sport where you can turn to your teammates and say, let me get 30 real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tiffany Mitchell. She thought about it because she heard Tosh say, I know. hold it. And then she said, uh, okay, shot clock is running down. If I don't shoot, it's going to be a turnover. So then it's going to be minus 10. You have the green light here. Spins it out of traffic. Crisscross and stays here. She's running down her team. <laughs> Play call made by Brian January, who is an established M uh, WNBA veteran, champion, 14-year career. Makes sense for this group, too, with the guard play of Gray, Cloud, and Mitchell. Gray working the clock. 24 points tonight. Make it 26. Even Bree Jan's like, dang. <laughs> For that, for that. You're facilitating. <laughs> Couldn't catch that. Bree January turned to us and said, why, why am I here? <laughs> 26 points, nine rebounds, seven assists for Alicia Gray. First time captain. Finished fourth on the leaderboard last year. Time runs out. Team Gray. Each member racks up 180 points, and they win three of the four quarters in the first game of our doubleheader on opening night. Six players in double figures. We'll come back and assess the action here at Fair Park Coliseum in Dallas. Alicia Gray and her team with the win. Alicia Gray and Team Gray victorious in game one of Opening weekend, 88-67, 411 game points for Ali Chagray. 180 apiece for the winning squad. And Cheryl, Ali Chagray, special opening night, 26-9-7. My goodness, what didn't she do? Scoring from everywhere on the floor. Nice pull-up jumper. Nice spin move, getting to the hole, finishing with the left. Oh, nice shot fake. 
Haley Jones in the air, nice pull-up jumper. Alicia Gray was just flat out on fire tonight. Ari, I don't know if she has anything left in the tank, because she got it done tonight. Cheryl said you got it done tonight, Alicia. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I mean, that was the biggest thing. First time being a captain, wanting to cap it off with a win, so yeah, we did our thing tonight. You know, one thing about you, you said the Athletes on the League kind of pushes you into that leadership position, and you constructed this team. What were you most impressed with your team about tonight? Uh, just how we stayed together. I know when going into picking my team, I had a strategy uh, of a defensive mindset, and you got Tosh, too. And see, I mean, we all lock up on defense. And then we like to get out and run, too. So that was definitely my strategy. Mm. You know what? You have played on some of the biggest stages. But something about you playing in Athletes Unlimited just makes me go like, ooh, ooh. Walk us through the nasty snap, uh, step back and then just how you're able to find your confidence through this league. I mean, Athletes Unlimited is a great opportunity for me. It allows me to work on my game and also work on moves that, that I do in my train. I mean, I, any move you see me doing a game, I've worked on it in my training set, so I've definitely worked on the snatch back plenty of times, so that's just something in my bag. I know you're, like, <laughs> undefeated and want to know. Look, look, we're going to keep it going, but what are you going to tell your team so you can stay keeping this momentum going? Uh, just stay focused. Uh, I know in the second half, I mean, the second quarter going to halftime, we kind of lost a little focus, but we just got to be able to carry the intensity that we started in the first quarter through four quarters. Okay, look, Brendan, I'm going to have to give it back to you because me and Cappy Cap are going to go celebrate on the side, okay? All right, very good. Okay. I'll tell you, I think Tanisha Wright and Don Staley are very proud of Alicia Gray and her performance tonight. Wow, 411 leader board points. And I, I would also make mention, I don't think that's the first time and only time Alicia Gray will be a captain in Athletes Unlimited. As we welcome in our second participant, in the chair chat, Emily Engsler, first year in Athletes Unlimited, joining us now. Emily, excellent game for your squad. And, you know, Cheryl and I were talking during the game, how would the bigs, you and uh, Bulgok as well as Muldrow, how would you fit in the mix with some dynamic guards? And wow, it looks like you've all had a ton of experience playing together already. Yeah, I feel like this group from the day we kind of put the team together has uh, connected really well. So it's been extremely fun. Emily, turn to your right. Yeah, hi. <laughs> no, I was just like, hi. Uh -oh. Hey. Listen, okay, I just wanted to see your face. I appreciate but that. But here's what I want to say. Congratulations. Like, you had a great night. Seven rebounds, 11 points, six big blocks. What made you decide you wanted to play in Athletes Unlimited this year? Thank you. I appreciate that. And, um... I think the biggest thing was I'm coming back from an injury and I've said it back to back just because it's been like eight months since I played a basketball game and I needed to get back on the court and Athletes Unlimited is such an amazing league to do that because of their medical and the opportunities they give us to play for causes and now I get to go and play with some of the best people in the, in, you know, in the world. So I, I've been really excited and it felt so good to play basketball again. Well, I know you looked really good out on the floor, if that does anything for your confidence. You. And I said over here that I am a fan, and I'm looking forward to watching you play all season long. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, Emily Engsler. And we'll get you out on this. Just where, where do you think this team is headed for this weekend? Because you set a really high precedent tonight. I hope you save some for Saturday because that was a high offensive output game. And like Cheryl mentioned, your defense really helped propel your offense. Yeah, I think this definitely sent the message that we can hoop and we can hoop together. And, you know, we only had a small amount of time and uh, how we connected well. I think this weekend's going to go really well. You know, in practice, it's just a good vibe. And we work really hard. And we actually, you know, we're actually working hard in practice for these games. So I think defensively was honestly the reason we won that game, even though we did score a lot. We right. sat down and played defense. And to me, that's how you win basketball games. Scored 15 points off turnovers tonight. Emily Engsler, first year in Athletes Unlimited, the New York City kid. Getting it done today. Thank you so much for your time, and best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right, Emily Engsler. Great to have her joining us. And, yeah, a lot of members of Team Gray filled up the stat sheet tonight. 11 and 7, six blocks. Team Gray shoots 51% from the field. A high assist rate as well tonight for the squad in orange. 35 field goals, 22 assists. She'll take that any given night. Yeah, I mean, they shared the basketball. Anytime you can have six players in double figures, 22 assists, that means you are sharing the basketball, moving the basketball, and knocking down quite a few shots. When you rack up the blocks as well as the steals, 
That's 80 points for Emily Engsler, just on the defensive end of the floor. So we rejoin you back at the booth. So our first game, Cheryl, is in the books tonight, and we've got a good one between Team Sims and Team Mitchell coming up. But that was a, a fun first game, and I'll tell you, I'm still I'm still blown away by how Team Gray brought it, and was so they were so connected. We hear that word so often, both ends connected. So that was a lot of fun. Well, you know, the the one or, one word that comes to mind for me when I think about athletes unlimited is competitive. It doesn't matter what the score is because you're playing for something, right? Every quarter matters. Every every turnover, every basket, everything matters. And this game in particular, I thought was a great start to opening night and looking forward to game two. Got a feeling who might win MVP one? Uh, I think so. Alicia Gray, maybe? I think that would make a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> first time captain, which th that feels weird after watching that performance to say out loud, a first time captain. Well, you know what's really interesting is that a, a lot of players can't necessarily perform like that as a captain because they feel like they have so much else that they have to worry about calling plays, running practices, getting everybody involved. But I thought Alicia Gray wore that C on her chest very well tonight, and I'm looking forward to see what she brings on Saturday. Last year, Alicia Gray finished fifth in total stat points. The victory certainly plays a part. Gray, number one on the leaderboard. And, and look, we got to think about this. We have not even factored in MVP points yet. So imagine what that number gets to as we scroll through. Based on the final score, Cheryl, it makes sense. So uh, some work to do for Team Hall and some of their individuals. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought uh, Alicia Gray, if she doesn't win first place MVP, shame on you. <laughs> Once again, our final score, we'll keep an eye. Team Gray, 88, Team Hall, 67. Coming up at 9 Eastern, it's game two of Athletes Unlimited Pro Basketball as Team Sims takes on Team Mitchell. For Cheryl Swoops, Ari Chambers, Savannah Collins, and our entire crew, I'm Brendan Glasheen. See you in a bit. For Team Sims, Team Mitchell.